You know, looking at the Switch Lite right now, there's one massive triumph that could have ruined this whole launch entirely. They could have decided that the Switch Lite would be digital only, and that would have been... Since the PS Vita, we haven't really seen a dedicated handheld from a console manufacturer, and even when the Nintendo Switch launched, it was more of a console that could also be portable. So is the Nintendo Switch Lite going to be a return to the glory days of handheld console, dedicated handheld gaming consoles? All that and more, but first, coffee. All right. Today's coffee is India APAA. So I'm actually quite excited to show you this because India APA is currently my favorite roast. I usually get one new variety, but I almost always get myself 100 grams of this as well. And I think it's a slightly higher roast than usual as well. What I really want to talk about today is the Nintendo Switch Lite. Not the PS Vita, not Nintendo Switch, but the P Switch Lite. And it's the new console that apparently Nintendo said they weren't going to be putting out any hardware this year, but then they just randomly put out this video and announced Nintendo Switch Lite. It's basically a Nintendo Switch, but it doesn't actually work as a home console, so you can't plug it into a TV. One of the nicest things about the Switch, and one of the main things that people were always one of the main things that people were excited about was the fact that it was a proper Nintendo home console, and so we finally had a successor to the Nintendo Wii U, but it was also kind of a successor to the Nintendo 3DS, and of course they've officially, uh, when they officially talk about it, they don't really say like it's the, it's replacing the 3DS or anything, and in fact, apparently the Nintendo Switch Lite also doesn't really replace the Nintendo 3DS, but essentially with the Nintendo Switch Lite coming out at this current price, I really don't see much place the Nintendo 3DS anymore, and also I don't really see any reason for a developer to go for developing on the 3DS when they could just be developing for Nintendo Switch Lite. Let's grind! So it's really exciting to see that Nintendo has come up with a Switch Lite. It's not like it's a surprising move, and probably the main thing that I've taken away from this whole thing is that this is the most obvious correct thing that needs to happen and it seems to happen with all other devices as well when you think of mobile phones there's almost always going to be like a normal version and the plus or the max version that's a bit larger or the mini version that's a bit smaller if you don't put out these other screen sizes you're just missing out on money that could be made but one of the special reasons why a mini version with the switch is especially important is because this is the type of console that children want two of, or rather, if you're in a family and you have two children, you're gonna end up having to buy more than one Switch. And when the Nintendo Switch came out, and I think it's still the same price, it's about $300, or at least that's how much it cost when it came out, and I'm pretty sure it hasn't really gone down in price. Maybe there's certain bundles that they sell at Christmas time and all that. But if you're a parent and you need to buy Pokemon, and that's the game, that's the Nintendo game that's coming out this year, plus Animal Crossing is coming out next year, it's getting to that point where children can't really share the Switch anymore. They're going to want to play at the same time and battle each other. And up until this point, one of the nicest things about Switch is that you could only buy one console and s satisfy most of your family because you can take the controllers off and play two player with only one console, or you could buy more controllers and play up to like four people or eight people. I don't know how many people you can have. I think maybe you can have eight people. But we're getting to that point where Pokemon is coming out. And one of the main things about Pokemon that changed gaming sales was that you can sell two of the exact same game to a family that previously might have only bought one. Now first of all you need two cartridges so that you can battle at the same time, but for some reason they just decided there's only one save file per cartridge. Now we're totally used to it now, we get it, we're, we're fine and we're down with it. Where before you could buy like one RPG cartridge and you could play a bit and have your save file and you could pass it over to your sister or your brother and they could have their own save file and you could keep playing. Pokemon was different, you needed to have your own cartridge. That also encouraged the practice of playing battles together, trading Pokemon to each other, but basically you need to have two consoles for this. And so especially with Pokemon coming out, it's gonna be more important that people are able to afford two Nintendo Switches, one for each kid that wants to play. I know, you know, adults are playing Pokemon as well, so there's that. But the real question is, is this console for $200 something that you need to buy? Is it really only coming out for children, or is it something that adults would be interested in as well? And if you watch this ad that they've run for the Nintendo Switch, it is mostly college students or 
adults at work and there was like an astronaut in the ad who's like in space playing his Nintendo Switch Lite. You didn't see a huge predominant focus on children playing Nintendo Switch. So they clearly think that this is something that even adults would be interested in as well. I don't know any specific numbers for sure, but looking at this ad, it's clear that this is the sort of product that from the marketing research that they did, they thought it would sell well not just to kids, but also to adults who don't want to carry around something this big. Because in fairness, as an adult, we're all expecting our devices to be about this size, pocket size, and this is very much not pocket size. And unfortunately, one of the weirdest things is that this is also not very pocket size. Now I have to admit, the PS Vita was, not, was never really especially pocket size. Like if I try and put this in my pocket, Oh, if it's in, if it's in quite well, actually. <laughs> well, that's destroyed my point. The thing is, the PS Vita was also not especially pocket sized. The original PS Vita that came out was actually a bit bulkier than this. So this is a bit slimmer. Than, in fact, I think they called it the PS Vita Slim or the PS Vita 2000, but it was never really truly pocketable. And neither is this, the Nintendo Switch Lite. Oh, the water's done. I'm going to go and grab it. So from what I gather on the internet, regarding opinions on the Nintendo Switch Lite, is that opinions are a little bit divided on whether this is really much of an update to the Nintendo Switch. And let's be quite honest, it's not meant to be an update to the Nintendo Switch. It's got fewer features in general. You can't plug it into a TV, it's got a smaller screen, you can't remove the Joy-Cons, and it doesn't have HD rumble. Who knows, there may be other features that it also doesn't have. But is it a return to the age of dedicated handheld hardware? Currently, I really don't think that's the case. Personally speaking, however, I actually only really use my Switch in handheld mode. That's not to say that I think most people use it that way, but I do personally only really use mine in handheld mode. And so I'm actually quite excited about making the Switch as small as possible. I don't know what that's going to mean for games looking too small because they were all destined for or designed for being played on a TV with a large screen and large font sizes. But in general, from what I've experienced so far, I've been managing to play on in handheld mode with absolutely no issues. And I don't think that making the screen one inch smaller is gonna have much of an effect on that. Now this next thing that I was a little bit worried about was the controllers. I'm actually a little bit concerned that the buttons and the analog stick are too close together and when I'm looking at these screenshots now it appears to me that they're pretty much exactly the same as they were before. I thought that because the Joy-Cons are going to be smaller they're going to be even more cramped but it looks to me like they've placed the buttons and the analog stick the same distance away from each other as they are on the original Nintendo Switch. But is it a return to hand, like dedicated handhelds? I really don't think so. It's not like you're going to see them discontinue the original Switch and then have a complete separate home console which is extra powerful and a handheld which is less powerful. This is still, as far as I can tell, generally <laughs> the same hardware designed to play the same level of games that you can play on your regular Nintendo Switch. All right, let's drink some of this India APAA. Very excited about this. I've been making slightly smaller cups than usual, trying to keep my attention on, in check. Ah, this is the stuff. I, I'm so into this coffee right now. I don't know what it is. It's, it tastes like an even darker brown than the color would suggest looking at the beans. You're like, this is the flavor it's going to be. Deep, deep roasty sensation. I really like it. So let's talk about the Nintendo Switch Lite. I don't think it's a return to dedicated handheld in that I don't think there's going to be handheld only games and console only games. It's still the same software. Whatever is designed to work on the Switch home console is going to work on the handheld. If anything, I think there's quite a cool opportunity to make a Switch Pro console now, whereas if they had made a Switch and a Switch Pro, it would make people who own the Switch feel a bit like, oh no, I don't have the console that can do everything that the new Nintendo 3DS can do, you know what I mean? It's like, there was the new version and it could technically do some stuff that the original one couldn't do, but then in the end they only released like one or two games that actually took advantage of the new hardware. But now that we have the Nintendo Switch Lite, we've got two in the line. We've got 
Original Switch, and then you'll also have Nintendo Switch Lite, slightly lower down. A little bit cheaper, but plays all the same games. Now, if you have a Nintendo Switch Pro, it's not like, oh, I've got the lesser Switch. And it's, in a way, you just feel like, okay, now I've got Switch hardware. This is the stuff that, this is the hardware that plays all those great handheld experiences. And if I really want to only be at home and play extra high graphics, more intense stuff, then I can buy the Switch Pro console, and maybe that will have the super important eSports titles and stuff that can't, you know, stuff that is being a little bit limited by the mobile hardware of the Switch. Though we have to be really impressed with what's been achieved on the hard mobile hardware, the Tegra chipset so far. Even if a Switch Pro were to come out, it's obviously not going to come out this year. <laughs> of course, it's it, you can never really be, you, can, you have to be a little careful, like you say, it's never going to come out this year, and then it comes out this year anyway. It could come out this year, but I, I very much doubt it. I think their focus really is on Pokemon coming out this year and Animal Crossing coming out next year and having a slightly cheaper Switch. And I say slightly, it's like 50% cheaper. We're going up from $300 for this. Imagine if you've got two kids and you need to buy two of these. And okay, you don't need to, but you want to have a Switch for each child so that they can battle each other and trade Pokemon and, you know, they go to different schools and they want to trade Pokemon with their friends at their different schools and all that. $300 plus $300 is $600, but if you had two that were $200, then we're looking at $400 total. And as a parent, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna buy you both Switch lights. Because in fairness, I don't like you guys hogging the TV anyway, and I'm pretty much sure that most kids are not playing their Nintendo Switch on the TV. They're probably just sitting on the couch in bed playing with their Switch right up against their face. Because why bother playing on the TV? It's kind of like the TV experience is only there for us who remember the TV game experience. The TV console thing is for us gamers who grew up with that being the only thing and the only way it feels like the only way to truly experience this game fully is to have it on a nice big screen on a big gaming monitor or on a big TV or for all the people who are into streaming it's important to have the docking station but when you think about the target and I really do think that the target for the Nintendo Switch Lite is people who are basically kids playing Pokemon I don't think they even think about the docked mode as an important feature. And so I think there are some opinions that maybe $200 is a bit expensive. What? Like, it doesn't come with the Joy-Cons, it doesn't have HD rumble, it's got a smaller screen, it's, uh, what did I say? Did I always say the thing about the Joy-Con? Doesn't have docked mode, no HDMI cable, stuff like that. Maybe it should be even cheaper. I, I don't really know if they could realistically make it much cheaper than this. They still have to get the chipset that plays full-blown Switch games. Maybe they're not playing it in docked mode, but in handheld mode, it's still quite a feat of engineering to be able to get this hardware running at the temperature it's going to be running at without a much louder, louder like cooling fan, draining extra battery, and it's supposedly, according to the specs, it's actually going to run longer on the battery, like half an hour longer than the original Switch did. So it'll be a little bit smaller, but it'll still run a little bit longer. In fairness, the Nintendo Switch doesn't run that long anyway, even on the battery. I, I get like maybe two or three hours on it. But to anyone who has reservations about the Nintendo Switch Lite, and wondering like, oh, this is this is a bit of ripoff, or they're just trying to cash in, or they just want to get more money out of people who don't own the Switch, but it's really not as good hardware. It's like, well, it might not be as good to people who really feel that the docked experience is an important part of console gaming. But coming from someone like me, who has considered something like the PS Vita, which never had a dock to start with, and I was totally happy paying all the money for this. I think this was like, 23,000? I think this was a little bit more expensive than what they're going to be charging for the Nintendo Switch Lite. I thought that this level of handheld was perfectly fine for the amount of money. Of course, the PS Vita didn't really succeed, but I don't really think it's only because of the price. When the slim version came out, it was cheaper than the original PS Vita, but a lot of what it didn't, didn't make it work was the software support, the first party 
software support was, was completely pulled way too early with the Vita. Switch is still going strong, they've got Pokemon coming out later this year, in the future, next year they've got Animal Crossing coming out, they've got tons of franchises they haven't even touched yet, they've already got Smash Ultimate and they keep pumping out new DLC characters for that. As far as I can tell, Nintendo has got a very safe future with Switch and Switch Lite. I really do think that it really isn't for the hardcore gamer who already owns a Switch. That being said, I feel like there's the hardcore gamer who owns a Switch and thinks that light, the Switch Lite is a bit of a pointless, I don't need it thing. And then there's gonna be people who are the enthusiasts, and I consider myself like, enthusiast. I don't know if I would consider myself a hardcore Switch gamer, but I do consider myself an enthusiast, and so I'm gonna buy the Switch, and as soon as I see something cool like Nintendo Switch Lite, I'm definitely gonna buy one of those as well. Just because that's basically where I pump all my money, I'm like, if I can get this gaming experience, but in a slightly smaller form factor, then of course I'm gonna buy I'm gonna spend an extra $200 to get one of these as well, why not? You know me, I've talked about my hoarding habits, I love to hoard stuff. Regarding the colour options, we've got yellow, grey, and turquoise. Hmm, I mean, I like turquoise because I'm a Hatsune Miku fan, and I'm pretty sure that turquoise, because there's a turquoise model, there just has to be a special Hatsune Miku Project Diva limited edition that comes out next year. If there isn't, I'll be incredibly disappointed, but because there's already a turquoise model, it would be so easy to make a special limited edition Project Diva version. Honestly, the colours are a little bit strange. It's like we've already got this blue, almost turquoise color, but it's not quite turquoise. And I'm looking at the pictures now, and we've got like a turquoise console next to a yellow console next to these bluey turquoise and red. And if this blue didn't already exist, maybe turquoise would be fine. But I think turquoise next to this, I don't know, just in the pictures I've got, I'm seeing here, it's like it's a real clash of color. Honestly, it's not the three colors I would have chosen to launch it with. I think I probably would have gone for the safer, the things that they usually go for with the their 3DS consoles, white, black, and maybe blue and pink, more primary color stuff. I don't know, yellow, was that a popular iPhone color? Again, I'm guessing that everything to do with Nintendo Switch Lite has nothing to do with Nintendo's vision for the future of handheld gaming. I'm pretty sure this is 100% the result of marketing research telling them exactly what is going to sell well. Pokemon's coming out, so we need a cheaper console, and we also want to make a little bit more profit on a console that costs a bit less to make. Increase that profit margin, make a slightly smaller console, and it's the Switch Mini. What colors are we gonna make it in? Well, let's just go for as neutral colors as possible, that way everyone can buy any of these colors without any of the pressures of gender, like you need to have blue if you're the boy, or you need to have pink if you're a girl. They've got rid of all that because there is no blue and pink, there's now yellow and turquoise, and so you can just decide which one you like. Just personally, these three colors are just so uncommon that I don't, I'm not leaning towards any of them right now. It's just like, well, if I have to choose a color model, I guess I'll get the turquoise one, but I don't really want to be seen with a bright turquoise console, so I don't know, maybe I'll go for the gray, but the gray is a little bit boring, but maybe if I put stickers on it, it'll be okay. Not really sure how I feel about the color options. Essentially, that's how I feel about it. I don't think that Nintendo Switch Lite has anything to do with any sp specific vision of the future for handheld gaming. I guess if I were to really reach out and make up something, some sort of conspiracy theory, it's that maybe a Switch Pro is going to come out and they don't want people to, who own the normal Switch to feel like they've got the lower console or a console that can't do quite as much. If we have a Switch and a Switch Lite, then it's very clear that Switch is the base standard, that all games need to be designed to run on at least the Switch and the Switch Lite, and that the Pro will just be this super extra thing for people who are super enthusiasts, who are into eSports or streaming or content creation, and those people, there you know, there will be the original Switch or the Switch Pro, which they can buy to do more stuff like that. But that's only if I'm really reaching out. Honestly, I just think that Nintendo Switch Lite is a smart decision based on the numbers must be saying that people want this. You can't just make an iPhone and an iPhone Plus. You need to also have the iPhone SE, which is a little bit smaller. And you can't just have an iPad 11 and an iPad 12.9 inch. You've got to have an iPad mini as well. And as you saw, iPad mini did disappear for a while. I'm pretty sure the numbers were just saying people don't want a middle of the range iPad mini device, which is right in between the iPhone 
Plus and the actual iPad. I'm pretty sure that the numbers are just doing this all the time in the market research and now it's like on the up and they're just like, hey, it looks like people are looking for this middle of the road screen size again. It's time to put out the Nintendo Switch Lite, why not? And just from my experience knowing people who do own the Switch, men and women, it's not actually super portable. I generally have to carry around a slightly bigger bag if I want to carry my Switch around. Even sometimes in my, my bicycle, you've seen like I did a tour video when I went cycling. I actually had to take the controllers so I could slide this into the bag if I wanted to do it comfortably. But something that's important is the size of a purse. The purse that you carry around your wallet in, your keys in, your Amazon Kindle in, and the Switch is a slightly weird size because it's just a little bit too long. But apparently, this is about the size of the Switch Lite. Now if you compare that to the PS Vita, well, actually, it's not quite as small as a PS Vita yet, but it's getting there. The weird thing is that, actually, if you really wanted the most portable one, then you would just get the normal Switch and you would just take controllers off and then just click them back on when you want to play. But every extra step that you have to go through to start gaming is one step extra that prevents you from spending money in, on the eShop, which is ultimately what these companies want you to do. Clearly, it's important that they have these consoles out there that are the size of your purse or your man bag so that you can carry around your games console without having to buy like a gaming backpack. I think one of the themes of the past 10 years has been making technology work for us as opposed to us changing our lives to work for technology. And you've seen it with gaming, laptops have become slimmer and if they really want to compete, they got to, they've got to be small. There are still a few people who buy a giant gaming laptop because they're going to university all the time and they're not, but they're not actually going to be using it on their lap. But a lot of gaming laptops are becoming slimmer because we need to keep them in our just regular sized backpacks. You know, we've seen it with mobile phones. They've got to get slimmer and slimmer and slimmer until they're practically like paper thin. We're even trying to roll them up into rollable screens or foldable screens, trying to put technology on our wrists so that we don't even have to touch anything. We just pick it up, look at it, and it turns on without touching it or pressing anything on it. But it's also contradicting itself because in making itself easier to slip into our lives, it's also making itself more necessary so that we can't live without it. <laughs> it's such a weird contradiction. I like the look of it. Design-wise, it looks a lot like the PS Vita. You can see these nice slim curves that they basically design cues that have been taken straight out of this and put into the Nintendo Switch. I'm fine with it. I think it makes it look great. Looks like it'll be more portable, looks like it'll be more affordable, and basically can't complain with that. You know, looking at the Switch Lite right now, there's one massive triumph that could have ruined this whole launch entirely. They could have decided that the Switch Lite would be digital only, and that would have been awful, personally. Now, I have actually got almost all of my games digital only, but starting last week, I'm going back to physical. Because Nintendo games, it just so happens that they massively hold their value. You can sell Nintendo games like two, three, or four years later, they'll still sell for like 50% of the value that I bought them for. I mean, that's a Japan specific thing. I don't know what it's like in other countries. Apparently it's not quite as good. But compared to all my other consoles, like I don't mind buying everything digital on PlayStation right now. Of course, Steam, everything has to be digital. Nintendo really could have released the Nintendo Switch Lite and said, look, if you wanna play physical games, you have to buy this one. But if you don't mind going digital only, then you can get a much cheaper console that can play all of the exact same games, but it's gotta be digital only, which means you can't trade in your games and sell them secondhand, which obviously Nintendo makes no profit off if you sell your game secondhand. If you buy a second, if someone buys a game secondhand from a secondhand shop, obviously Nintendo's not seeing any extra profit out of that. I do argue that the secondhand market makes it easier to spend 60 to $70 on a game because you know that you can also make some of that money back if you sell it later. So secondhand market is important to the economics of selling an expensive console. That's a completely different discussion for another time. I don't think we're really patting them on the back enough for this because when the PSP Go came out, I don't know if you remember, the PSP Go is actually a PSP that is a smaller version of the PSP, but it was digital only. And a lot of people weren't too happy about that. Obviously, just because of the size, 
you can't fit a UMD into that. And so it had to be digital only. But forcing people to go digital is not the same as giving people a digital only option. And with the current Switch, you could just decide to go digital only. But like I have, I went, I decided to go digital only, but I'm returning back to the land of physical just because it's going to make it easier for me to try a larger variety of games, knowing that I can sell them at quite a high price in Japan. Their value just manages to hold really well. So yeah, if there's anything I want to leave you with is let's, let's show our appreciation for Nintendo not making this digital only because that would have sucked. Anyway, it's just a quick coffee video in between work that I'm doing here. So I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff and join us on Discord. We can talk about the new Nintendo Switch Lite in the gear chat section or in the general section. There's lots of different chat rooms in the Discord. Don't forget to click the bell as well so you get notifications about new videos coming out on the channel. I now have internet. I also have my internet, my fast internet set up now. So I'll be back to live streaming, hopefully once a week on YouTube and two or three times a week on Twitch. I'll let you know in the community group tab. I'll put my calendars up like I used to. Whew, things are all getting back to normal finally after the house move and all that. I've been really exhausted from it. Anyway, I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.